Welcome to the new episode of Tales of a Rail Yard. I am the new and hopefully permanent narrator for the series. I bet some of you have noticed that some of the episodes have had different narrators or no narrators at all. I uh, hope you enjoy me doing this, and uh, I'll see you in the episode. One morning, Anthony was speeding down the line with a freight train. He couldn't help but feel that it was a very lovely day. Clouds in the sky, and running right on time with his train. And Charlie's no longer pulling my wheels. I don't know what could possibly go wrong in such a day like this. But as one knows, saying that jinxes a person's luck. Earlier that day, some boys were fiddling with a switch on the line. They had set it in the wrong direction and ran off when no one was looking. Anthony was heading for trouble. That's strange. I thought it was that way. Oh snap, oh snap, brakes, brakes! What are you doing on my line? Buddy, I am just as confused as you are. Hey, welcome back, Anthony. Where have you been? A uh, long story. Someone threw a switch without any notice, which diverted me onto the wrong line, and I almost crashed in another train. Boy, that must have been rough. Man, you can say that again. The other guy thought it was my fault, but I wasn't. I can't control the direction switches go. I <sighs> can't believe we still have to go through more court outings in the next few days. Whoever threw that switch would be dragged out to the street and shot. Don't kick yourself, Anthony. It happens to all of us. I've been through it myself. Want to hear? Do you think it was the Bee Brothers? Don't mention those gremlins, Katie. The railroad would be a better place if they were destroying the missile attack. I hate to say it, but they're here for a reason. Things come and go, and all of us stay. They're here to- Are you trying to say something, Steve? Well, it's just that I- You guys. You guys. Two things, okay? Shut up and let Vincent tell his story for crying out loud. Uh, thanks, Charlie. We shall begin. It was a few years ago, and I was preparing to take a passenger train to Chicago. Top of the morning, Vince. Say, are you doing all right? Of course I am. Why? Do I have a bug on my face? No, not at all. I just noticed that you're standing in black smoke. You must have taken on a bad cold this morning. Um, I'm an oil burner. Okay, okay, then it's bad oil. Still, be careful. You might break down if you don't get that checked. Don't worry, Hank. That is the last thing I'm concerned about. What do you think will happen on a game night? Suit yourself. Vincent had a big day ahead of him. The train was really full and there was a ball game going on in Big City. Lots of people were heading over to see it, and they were all very excited. Get in quickly, please. We don't want to be late. All clear, Vincent. Way we go.
Down the line, there was a group of boys who were planning to cause havoc. They had snuck away from their parents and they had heard a train coming. They had begun to plot. You boys, I think you hear a train coming. Well, Sue, let me see. Oh, this will be glorious. It looks like an express passenger train. Have we any stones? You are Ben Scotum. Head him over, Ben. Look, this time I get to hit the look and then it's got it. Fine. Just give some to us already. You ready, guys? This is gonna be good. Say, there's some boys up there. Oh, wait. What are they doing with those rocks? Oh! Ow! 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 Thrown stones at Vincent and the passengers. They were all angry, and the coaches were too. Oh my dear windows! Don't let them do such a thing. Call the police! That's vandalism! Are you nuts? We have no lead without an identification. Everybody, calm down. We're all just fine. How? Those incompetent brats hit me in the back of the head. I'm bleeding. Can you not see I'm bleeding pretty badly? I think I have to go to the hospital. Uh, first aid's over there. It could be worse. They could have done something to derail us. My <coughs> oh, man. I think Hank was right about the bad oil earlier today. Now those boys threw stones at us. And I think one might have gone into my smoke snack. I'm not feeling so hot. Bad oil? Hmm. I think we could use that to our advantage. What now? I read this in the book once. Maybe you could sneeze at the boys, per se. Oh, I get it. What am I letting some fluids out of my system? Good. Let's get these people to the game and worry about it on the way back. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> After the game, people were returning to the station to get back on their return. I'm curious as to what this is supposed to do. So, how exactly are we going to knock him out and sneeze? Well, the soot that comes from the fire and the steam locomotive can often clog up. Sort of like how mucus in your nose can. That's why you sneeze. Since Vincent got some bad fuel oil here today, I clogged his smoke box up, uh, hence he will sneeze. Luckily, he can hold it in until we get to where the boys were. Just one question. How do you know the boys will be there? They could have gone home. Don't worry. I've got a feeling about this one. Alright, Benson, let's do this. Morning, oh, you. Vincent made good time on the way back, and once they were approaching the area where the boys had been, Vincent prepared to execute their plan. The boys were indeed there, with more stones than before. Hey guys, it's the same train you saw earlier. Looks like they're thirsty for more. Oh boy, this is going to be a lot of fun. This is it. Alright, Vincent, do your thing. Watch! Oh, oh, my eyes, I can't see! Oh! Oh! <laughs> retreat! Retreat! <coughs> That'll show them. Good work, Vincent. Did you see their faces? <laughs> The next day, Vincent was at back of the sheds preparing to take another train when he heard an angry mother running towards him. Yo! You're the engine that injured my child! You should be ashamed of yourself! My son's head's been injured thanks to you! Um, Vincent? What did you do? Not now, Charlie! Ma'am, you do realize your son and the two lovers- Be quiet! What makes you think you can justify your actions? I demand to talk to your manager! Well, here he is. What seems to be the problem, Mom? 
Well, my son and his friends told me that your engine blew smoke and ashes at them, and even hit my son with a stone. How can you let him get away with that old kind of oppression? Oppression? You know, Mom, your son and his friends happened to throw stones at my engine and the people on his train. Did they tell you that? Well, no, but... Aha! Now I understand. Are you aware that they smashed the windows of the coaches? That one of the stones happened to hit a pastor's head? That the stones hit my engine and gave him dents and scratches? Not to mention, that stone you mentioned was thrown by them and went into my funnel. That's how I inhale it. Your son and his friends have several charges amongst them. Vandalism, injury, and trespassing. And we have several witnesses to prove it. I suggest that you monitor your son better. Same goes for his friend's parents. You're lucky I'm going to be generous with him and drop the charges. Get out! I will be mad, Vincent, but considering they did do the things I mentioned, I will let you go. They probably learned their lesson. Make sure to check on what you're filling up on today. Don't want to have another sneeze, especially not someone who doesn't deserve it. Ta-ta! <laughs> Got the good Vincent. That's what I call supreme karma. You're the man. You're the man. Oh yes, I remember that. Vincent, you're still the man. Why thank you, Charlie. It definitely worked too. As I never ran into those boys ever again after that. Well of course. You showed them who's boss. They definitely deserved it. I wish I could tell that engine about it. Too bad I don't have any evidence that it wasn't me like you did. Who knows? Maybe something will turn up. You're right. That was a really funny story, by the way. Show more stories in the future, please. I will! Shortly afterwards, surveillance footage from a camera turned up, which revealed the young man who set the switch illegally. When Anthony and the other agents saw it, he felt guilty. and apologized to Anthony for putting the blame on him. The young man wasn't as lucky as the three boys and was charged $500 for the threat of disaster. But both he and the boys learned something after their consequences. They shouldn't fool around on the railroad, let alone throw stones at trains, because they will hurt not just themselves, but other people.